Assessment Submission via Turnitin First and foremost, always give yourself enough time to make your submission. It's advised that you make your submissions at least 30 minutes before your deadline. Unless informed otherwise, do not include any identifying information at all within a submission made via Turnitin. For example, do not include your name, your username, your student ID, your email address, and do not include your exam number. Make sure the file name itself doesn't identify you and be sure to clear identifying metadata from the document you are submitting. A link to a guide on how to clear metadata from some common file formats is provided in the description of this video. In terms of the file you are submitting, be sure to comply with the assessment's requirements as to what type of file you need to submit. If your department, unless stated otherwise, requires submission of files as PDF, for example, then make sure it is a PDF that you submit. Where a submission point is set up to only allow file types that can be checked for similarity, your file will need to contain a minimum of 20 digitally typed words and be less than 800 pages in length. Turnitin will only accept files of up to 100 megabytes in size. If you are expected to use Turnitin for a submission, and your file is 100 megabytes or larger in size, then you will either need to reduce the file size or contact your department for advice on what to do. A link to a guide on how to reduce the size of some common file formats is provided in the description of this video. To make an assessment submission, first log into the VLE and access the VLE site through which you need to make your submission. Locate the Turnitin submission point you need to make your submission to within the VLE site. Noting that it's worth making sure you know exactly where to make an assessment submission well in advance of having to make the submission. If you are in any doubt as to where you need to submit a file for an assessment, contact your department for the necessary details. Click on the title of the submission point and then click the launch button at the bottom of the panel that appears. The first time you launch a Turnitin submission point, you will be presented with the Turnitin End User License Agreement. Click the I Agree button to continue. You will not need to do this again when accessing Turnitin submission points in future. After clicking the Launch button, be aware there can then be a short delay while the Assignment Dashboard loads. At the Assignment Dashboard, to see details about the submission point, Click the title of the submission point towards the top of the dashboard. An information box will expand that includes the base due date and time set for the assessment. If a rubric or grading form has been attached to the submission point, a link to view this will also be available. Where there is such an attachment, it can provide an indication of the criteria against which your work is assessed. It's important to note that the due date and time shown in the information box is the base deadline for the submission. If you have an extension or dispensation to submit after the base deadline, a due date and time unique to you is unfortunately not displayed by Turnitin. Do not worry, however, your personal deadline is tracked behind the scenes. You won't be penalised for late submission if you submit within the time frame granted to you specifically. Also note that the feedback release date and time shown in the submission point is likely to initially be set for a date and time quite a while after the actual expected time marks and feedback will be released. Again, don't worry. This setting will be adjusted later to release your feedback and marks in a timely manner. If making your first submission to a specific Turnitin submission point, click the Upload Submission button. A Submit File panel will appear. To attach a file you have available to your device locally, either drag and drop the file you wish to submit onto the panel, or click the Browse button and then use the standard file browser to locate and open the file you wish to submit. Selection of a file available to your device locally, rather than a document in the cloud for example, is the least complicated means by which you can attach a file for submission to Turnitin, and should be regarded as the preferred and primary method for attaching and submitting a file. The file name of the file you have selected will appear in the Submission Title field of the panel if you haven't entered any text in this field. While you can change the submission title to be something other than the file name of the file you have attached, 
it is generally advised that you don't do this. Click the Upload and Review button at the bottom of the Submit File panel. If the file you have attached is of a type that Turnitin can display the contents of, you will be presented with a paginated preview of the document. Check that this appears as expected and then, if it does, click the Submit to Turnitin button. If the file content is not of a type that can be previewed, check that the basic details look OK and click the Submit to Turnitin button. Turnitin will upload your file and present you with a submission complete message. This message automatically disappears after a short delay. After successful submission of a file, it is strongly advised that you immediately then view the submission. Or, where the submission is a file type where the contents can't be displayed by Turnitin, download your submission and open it locally to view it. This is to check that the file you have submitted was indeed the one you intended to submit and that it has integrity. The onus is on you to ensure that any submission you make is both the intended file and to ensure that it has successfully uploaded. If the submission is of a type that Turnitin can display the contents of, you can review your submission by clicking on the paper title shown in the assignment dashboard. A Turnitin Feedback Studio window will launch displaying your submission, and where the submission point has been set up to allow you to view the text matching report generated for your submission, you will be able to hide or view the report here too. It's worth noting, however, that generation of a text matching report for your submission is not immediate, and that you will likely need to refresh either the assignment dashboard or the Turnitin Feedback Studio window to check for its availability if you haven't navigated elsewhere since making your submission. Also note that interpretation and manipulation of the text matching report is not covered in this video. Where generation of a spelling and or grammar report has been enabled for a submission point, the Turnitin Feedback Studio window will also provide you with a means to hide or view this too. If you don't see this option when viewing your submission, then it is not available for that submission point. To download your submission, click the download paper icon at the assignment dashboard. The icon is a tray with a downward pointing arrow. You can resubmit as many times as you like, but only up until the due date and time set for the submission point has passed. To make a superseding submission, access the submission point and click the launch button as already described. When the assignment dashboard has loaded, you will see details of your previous submission displayed. To replace this submission with a new one, click the resubmit paper icon. This is a tray with an upward pointing arrow. Confirm that you want to proceed when prompted and then upload your revised file following the same procedure you used to submit the previous file. If you have already made a submission and need to resubmit after the due date and time for a submission point has elapsed, you will need to contact your Departmental Assessment Administration team to request that your current submission is cleared. It's important to note that such a request is only likely to be acted on during standard university office hours, and even within office hours will likely still involve some delay. With this in mind, once the due date and time has elapsed, and you know you will need to make a superseding submission, be sure to request clearance of an existing submission well in advance of needing to make the superseding submission. When requesting clearance of a submission, you must include a copy of the digital submission receipt for the file you wish cleared. To download the submission receipt, access the submission point and click the launch button. When the assignment dashboard has loaded, showing the row of details for your last submission, Click the Download Digital Receipt icon. This is a square with three lines on it at the right of the row. Turnitin will generate a PDF receipt for your submission. Wait for this to be ready and then download it and attach it to your clearance request. When making the request, also be sure to note the title of the VLE site the submission was made into. While that covers the key considerations of making an assessment submission with Turnitin, there are, however, a few more things it is worth being aware of. On the Submit File panel, you may notice that there are additional features at the Upload Submission stage of the process. Unless expressly told to do so, 
do not use the text input tab on this panel to make a submission. Also, on the Submit File panel, you will see a Cloud Submission drop down. This facilitates you being able to make submissions directly from Google Drive, OneDrive, and Dropbox. While submitting directly from cloud storage is not advised, if you do choose to try and submit a file stored in one of these platforms, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to successfully complete the submission. And if you do run into any problems trying to make a submission from a cloud source, don't persist with trying to make it work. Download the file from the cloud source in an appropriate format, then upload it using the primary Turnitin file submission procedure covered earlier in this video. Note that use of OneDrive and Dropbox is not currently supported by the university. Finally, when marking is complete and you are informed that your feedback and marks are available for an assessment, you just need to re-access the submission point for that assessment and click on the paper title shown in the assignment dashboard. Any feedback provided on your work can be viewed via the Turnitin Feedback Studio window along with your provisional mark. Click the Instructive Feedback Speech Bubble icon at the right of the Turnitin Feedback Studio window to reveal a panel displaying any written feedback that has been provided on your submission. If a grading form or rubric was attached to the submission point for providing you with feedback, click the View Rubric button to launch a window that will show you this. If your submission has been annotated, you will see the annotations displayed on your work. Good luck with your assessments.